Hi everyone, thank you for joining. I'm Alejandro. I am based in, the, in London. I am research fellow at the Turing Institute and I'm one of the organizers of the challenge with uh, Andrew Hyde that is as well joining. Andrew McDonald that he is as well uh, here today and, and all of us are gonna uh, host this session as, and this is the chair out and uh, team celebration activity that aims to uh, really have a kind of beat uh, like chill out, chill out, uh, chill out of what we've been working in the last month. So the, the agenda for today uh, is the first thing that we are doing. Uh, we've been doing the past minutes is like welcome everyone. We have some chair notes that you uh, in the meantime can uh, like fill there. And then we are gonna do a quick overview of the challenge. Uh, uh, Asumari uh, describing the organizing project and say something about the submission. Then uh, teams are gonna present uh, something about their experience in the challenge. They are happy to share the screen or they can only uh, have a kind of chat and uh, all mute the, the, as a team and, and share their experience with the, the challenge. After that, we will announce the winning team. And after we have the closure, and as I say, we have three, 30, min, 30 minutes that are optional and it will be recorded of, and it's gonna be a Q and A session. So let's start with the overview. I'm gonna pass now to, to my colleague, Andrew. Hello, hello everyone. Wonderful to see everyone here today. We're excited to have you joining us. Um, the Cloud Informatics Reproducibility Challenge, this is the first, uh, first year we've done this, our very inaugural. Uh, reproducibility challenge ran throughout the month of May, uh, from May 1st to 31st. Uh, we launched it on the heels of the uh, 2023 Climate Informatics Conference, which ran here in Cambridge in late April. Um, and in, in years past, we've done a sort of hackathon in conjunction with the uh, Climate Informatics Conference. This year, we decided to switch that hackathon into a reproducibility challenge, uh, and we wanted this to be online, accessible uh, worldwide, as opposed to it being just co-located with the conference. Uh, as a result, we had seven teams with 24 participants uh, from all across the world, uh, from the West Coast of the United States all the way um, into East Asia, which is really cool to have a truly global participation. Um, the object of the challenge, as, as those of you who participated were aware, um, but those of you who might be joining us just for this session today may not be aware, uh, was to reproduce and essentially re-implement the code uh, from a paper published in the Environmental Data Science Journal, um, and then to create a sort of notebook narrating this reproduction uh, such that it, that notebook could be published in the Environmental Data Science Jupyter book, uh, which is an initiative we'll hear more about later. Uh, throughout this challenge, we provided some access to cloud computing and we had a series of talks with the experts. Uh, we had guest speakers talking about open infrastructure, scientific software, uh, some really fascinating and important things. We closed off the challenge with a peer review uh, process and we're working towards getting the submissions to the challenge published in the EDS book. Um, and uh, as many of you are uh, who participated are probably excited uh, to hear later, uh, we're gonna be announcing a winning team who um, will be winning uh, credits in Cambridge University Press Books uh, thanks to their support of this challenge. So um, yeah, really, really fun team to be a part of. And, um, really excited, you know, we wouldn't be here without the participants and without the reviewers. So we're really thankful of their participation. Next slide. Um, yeah, I think this slide, I just wanted to mention uh, one of the supporters of this challenge, the climate informatics community. Um, it's essentially a community at the intersection of climate science and data science uh, and runs an annual conference. This year's conference was in Cambridge, um, but is open to hybrid attendance and um, often alternates between North America and Europe. We're still working on planning next year's conference, uh, but if you want to keep in the loop with this community, it's a really great community um, you know, to share resources, to meet collaborators. Uh, check us out on the web at the, the link in the bottom left or uh, follow us better yet on Twitter at Climformatics. Uh, those are the best, that's probably the best place to find us right now. Next slide. I think uh, Andrew's here. Yeah, okay, other Andrew has this one. Hi, yeah, my name's Andrew Hyde. I'm from Cambridge University Press. So I'm the person within CUP who's um, responsible for the Environmental Data Science Journal, which we launched um, a couple of years ago with Claire Monteleone as the editor in chief. So she is the founder or co-founder of the Climate Informatics Conference. So there's been 
a close relationship between the conference and Environmental Data Science Journal um, since, since we launched the latter. Um, and it's been really fun to be part of the organizing team for the conference in Cambridge and also um, to support this rep important reproducibility challenge. I'm going to be really interested to hear um, everyone's reflections um, because I think they're going to be really important for how we consider how we uh, within this um, environmental data science journal improve our processes, maybe uh, what we ask of authors uh, and how we check um, how we check things within the journal. So I'm really grateful to everyone to, who took part and, uh, and um, reached this stage and um, would be great to hear about your, your insights. Um, EDS is it's, it's it's an open access journal at CUP, bit of information there. Um, please, please feel free to um, follow us on Twitter. Uh, you can see the, the, uh, the handle down there and um, you can also sign up for alerts as well. But that's uh, what I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Andrews. And now is the turn of the Environmental Data Science Book, another project of community-driven initiative that was part of this uh, challenge. And basically, it was the kind of uh, infrastructure uh, to support the notebooks that uh, participants uh, have their responsibility tasks. And this is a computational notebook community for open environmental data science. It's an online resource to showcase and support the publication of data, research, and open source tool for collaborative, reproducible, and transparent environmental data science. We have a gallery uh, where we have different notebooks, most of them in Python. And the most important thing is that these notebooks aims to be uh, in somehow have a check-in that check that they are running online. And this is something that we are innovating in terms of reproducibility challenge because the submissions that would things as people will, will be able to as well to run the computations through this uh, kind of platform that we provide to participants. We as well have some social networks that everyone is welcome to, to follow us and as well visit the website of the initiative. Okay, so I guess it's now time, uh, not now time to empower our teams. And I, uh, in the next uh, 10, uh, 15 minutes, we are gonna hear from them. We have three teams who submitted and we have three kind of papers uh, that we described there. Uh, they submit notebooks that they have a notebook template from the EDS book, and these notebooks are peer reviewed. Uh, and, and, and we hope to publish the final version through the summer. Uh, very important to say here, we have a judging criteria where uh, we have three, three, three experts where they, uh, to, to know which is the winning team, we, uh, we, assess, we assess the accuracy, completeness, clarity, reproducibility, recommendation, and additional insights in terms of the general aspects. And in terms of the notebooks, we uh, uh, evaluated the code quality, output and visualization, data management, and test quality. So I guess it's time to start with the teams. And I guess we are starting with a team that uh, it was aiming to reproduce the first paper, the tension and attribution of climate change and the learning variational approach. So anyone from that team would like to share something? Yeah, I can share my screen if possible. Okay, so I hope you can see my screen. Yes, now we can. Yeah, okay. Okay, so as Alejandro mentioned, uh, the, our goal was to uh, reproduce this paper, the detection and attribution of climate change at deep learning and variation approach. And I did this with my colleagues Andres and Owen, uh, who I saw here now as well from Cambridge. Uh, and I would like to thank them for their cooperation throughout the month. Uh, so basically, this is the paper, as was mentioned, the goal of the paper is to use uh, deep learning models to detect climate change, and then use these trained deep learning models uh, together with a variational approach to sort of go backwards and try to see uh, what causes climate change in a simpler way. So to attribute the climate change to some external climate forcings. And this was done using a convolutional neural network with 12 climate simulation models, uh, which had different forcings from greenhouse gases, aerosols, and natural forcing. So there was a lot of data basically. So at the beginning we have, here you can see the 12 different models 
uh, all of which have four different types of forcing. So from the greenhouse to natural to historical models, which contained all of the data. Uh, so it was a bit hard to get around at the beginning, uh, but uh, I can also show you the notebook. So this is the final version that we created. And so the lot of code that we, so first we start by gathering the data and then pre-processing it to recreate the table that the authors also have in their paper and to recreate the visualization so that I just showed that uh, this is the data that we are working with, so that we are trying to train the model and then uh, evaluate it on. Um, afterwards, this data, to not go into too much detail, but this data is uh, used to train a convolutional neural network such that basically by having the different forcings, such as greenhouse gases, uh, aerosols, and uh, natural forcings, we try to estimate the historical uh, value of the global mean surface temperature uh, throughout time. And we train a convolutional neural network and a linear model. Here we can see that the convolutional neural network model does better. Uh, so this was one uh, test that authors did. And afterwards, they did an inverse model so that they get variational estimates using this train model to uh, sort of have a given the target as an input and try to do back propagation to sort of get to the opposite. So by giving the end to come uh, to the beginning, so to um, uh, estimate what are the four things that were used as input for that uh, output. And in this way, we can uh, sort of get the variational estimates uh, of the simulation. So these are the ones that have a dash line. And you can see that for most models like this, they're pretty close. Some models, there are some variations, but uh, overall the results were pretty good as can be seen here. And finally, uh, we can analyze these estimates throughout time to sort of uh, estimate how, uh, how these forcings have uh, attributed to climate change in the past and uh, more near the present. So, to, this is a similar figure to what they have in the paper, except that here we have 1970, here it's 1993. So we can see that the outcome is relatively similar, although in our uh, results, there's a bit of a higher variance. And uh, our probably, uh, this is because of uh, stochasticity in training, but also some difference that uh, might be come in the pipeline, which I'll just mention. Uh, to finalize, I'll talk about, so these were the pain points and lessons learned of the entire project. So first of all, the code base was very large and convoluted at once. So this is sort of a diagram of all of the different functions that called other functions, which was kind of difficult to start at the beginning. And uh, the, the code wasn't documented uh, too clearly. And most of the variables and all of the documentation was in French. So we had to do some additional levels of, uh, yeah, to sort of get through the, uh, understand the code. Uh, but uh, overall it had everything uh, we needed and perhaps even additional uh, details that uh, this is what I meant. Mentioned previously the pipeline that maybe some that the code base uh, had that, uh, yeah, we weren't too sure about. And overall, the paper was uh, really nice, but the, the terminal as someone coming not from a climate change field, so more from this uh, uh, data science side, some of the terminology, especially at the beginning with the 12 climate uh, models was a bit uh, complicated to grasp. And, but with the help of Andrew, we uh, figured that out. And the lessons learned, I think the most important part is the collaboration, but also for me specifically is how to better write code for other people. So now, even when I'm working on my own projects, I'm trying to sort of simplify some, some things just because I know how it is from the other side. When you come in and just see this giant code base and then you're like, okay, what's going on? So yeah, thanks. Thank you, Peter, for this nice uh, 
presentation. I, I guess the, the, the takeaways and lesson learned are very important and thank you for sharing. So now we go for the second thing is uh, sensitivity, sensitivity analysis of our regression model of ocean temperature. Uh, anyone from the team would like to share the screen or say something? We have uh, Jorge or... Um, I can start and Jorge, will you uh, demonstrate the notebook? So, sure. Uh, yeah. So I'm gonna share my screen. By the way, I'm Garima. Thanks for having us here. It's a wonderful opportunity and an event. Uh, do you guys see my screen? Yes, we see your screen. Awesome. Um, so um, our challenge basically was reproducing this paper, a sensitivity analysis of regression model of ocean temperature. Um, um, and basically, uh, what the authors are trying to do here is they're um, using a global circulation model of ocean temperature and uh, reproducing the results from that model using a regression model just based on the output of that uh, physics-based model. So one of the goals of the study is to understand um, if regression-based models uh, train just from 3D ocean models um, just learn only the statistical patterns or do they also understand the underlying physics of the system? So the goal is to do a sensitivity analysis of this regression model and see what parameters are important and what parameters are not. And then inferring whether the regression model that was created understood physics or was it just learning the statistical patterns? Um, so our goal here is to analyze this regressor uh, obviously train it, analyze it, and then reproduce the figures that were shown in this paper. There were about 12 to 13 figures and we were successful in reproducing all of the figures. Um, so we can go through the demo. Jorge, do you wanna do that? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes, we see your screen, Corey. Okay, so um, basically uh, after uh, the setup for the notebook and downloading the data, um, we created some of the figures that we saw at the beginning of the paper. Uh, so basically they had um, images about how um, the different uh, sections or slices of the of the um, whole um, uh, simulation data look like and how the temperatures change uh, between uh, every days. Um, so they had, um, they were uh, using differences in temperature between uh, uh, consecutive days and they used that, those changes um, uh, to uh, try to predict them using the, the different um, characteristics of the system. Uh, so we have, for example, here, how they looked at um, the change in, in uh, along the whole timeline of the temperature um, and uh, pointed out that even though the changes seem to be small at the beginning, uh, they accumulated and, and had this uh, behavior. Um, so after that, we uh, just went through uh, how to create the linear regression model. They, um, at the beginning, we, for, we used uh, some um, um, single, uh, simple linear regression um, that we trained to kind of see how everything uh, was going to be working with the different uh, um, withholding experiments that they that they used to see if the model was actually learning the underlying physics of the system. Uh, so uh, we trained some uh, linear regression models. And here, for example, you have the uh, predicted temperature uh, change of the linear regression model compared to the true temperature change that we saw on the data. And you can see that it's almost um, perfect uh, fit. So. 
Um, they also, um, so um, this was like one of the most important figures because they uh, were trying to see how uh, the coefficients, uh, uh, magnitudes of the different um, regressors um, uh, behave uh, when withholding uh, uh, the different uh, regressors. So lin running linear regressions without one of them, uh, but with the rest of, of the others uh, present uh, and so on. And um, so, yeah, the the regression model uh, had a non uh, were, was a nonlinear regression model um, to kind of capture the nonlinearity of the of the system. Um, so we we run uh, those nonlinear uh, regression models for the withholding experiments. Um, besides the simple linear regression we uh, run at the beginning. And yeah, these are some of the other plots that we saw on the on the um, uh, paper and how the each of the withholding withholding experiments uh, behave. So yeah, yeah. Let me try sharing it again. Yeah, no worries. Okay, um, awesome. So, um, so one of the major lessons that we learned was uh, that the physics parameters are actually important even in a regression model and it is successful in reproducing the uh, ocean dynamics. Um, and one of the things that we did is we provided the data set. Um, so um, I guess the biggest challenge and bottleneck of um, the data set that we have provided it that it's time consuming to download. It's about 52 GBs and you need it um, to run the notebook or to do any training uh, with the model. And the, the code, uh, it's not the most uh, efficient code. So the arrays that are created in the code are extremely huge and they can cause memory issues. They usually cause memory issues and they require computational resources. Um, so you need RAM of about 100 GB um, to be actually uh, able to load uh, some of the uh, interim arrays that are created in the code. Um, so we actually have created um, a data set of our own, which basically only includes say 15,000 points on, and not like um, 200,000 points. So we have the truncated feature arrays. We also have the predictions and they are all uh, available on Zenodo. Um, I think this is the Zenodo repository that we have. Um, and we have like more input arrays that we can upload if, um, if the EDS team is interested and if you want to provide your user the ability to run uh, any training, uh, any withholding experiment that the authors are trying to produce. Um, and we really enjoyed working with each other. Um, we all are from different technical backgrounds. So this was a really great uh, learning experience. We learned about how to frame the source um, code uh, structure, how to actually, like, I think, um, so this is my team. Uh, Daniela actually was very experienced in how to actually um, have the structure of a GitHub repository with codes, the pipelines. So if you look at our repository, we have codes as general and pipelines. So it actually, we made it pretty uh, more clear than the authors. Um, and yeah, thank you. So this is it. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Tim. Great, great work. Thank you for sharing your experience. That's uh, great to know what, what you've been uh, working and I'm glad to hear that you enjoy working together. Uh, okay, now we have the last team, uh, deep prior in variational simulation to estimate an ocean circulation without explicit regularization. We have, we have Mukulika, you want to share the screen and we have as well Rutika. They are joining uh, from India, if I'm not wrong. Hello, yeah, everyone. Am I audible? 
Are you sharing a screen? Okay. Yeah. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, hi everyone. I'm Rutika and this is my partner Mukulika. We are CS undergrads from Mumbai, India. Today, we are presenting our notebook, which is called Variational Data Assimilation with Deep Prior. The paper that we have reproduced is, next slide. The paper that we have reproduced is titled Deep Prior in Variational Assimilation to Estimate an Ocean Circulation Without Explicit Regularization. So the authors of the research paper propose a new method for data assimilation that uses deep prior. Data assimilation is a method for estimating the state of a physical system from incomplete observations. A deep prior is a neural network that is trained to represent prior knowledge about the state of a physical system. It can be used to solve uh, inverse problems in climate modeling. So it's a fully unsupervised model which acts like an uh, implicit irregularization in variational da data assimilation method and it only needs uh, the initial conditions of the system. The algorithm is demonstrated with a shallow water toy model and the simulated observations are compared with variational assimilation without regularization, with uh, Thikono regularization and with deep uh, prior. So coming to the implications and the conclusion of the research, so the research has several implications. One of which is that it shows that uh, deep priors can be used to improve the accuracy of data assimilation methods. This means that deep priors can be used to improve the accuracy of modeling for a wide variety of physical systems. Mo moving on, Mukulika will give us an overview of the notebook. Mm, yeah, so we have the link to the notebook uh, in the collab, uh, in Google collab, if anyone wants to, wants to check it out. And let me just okay. Um, so apart from so the paper uh, came with uh, the complete code repository, which was uh, very modular and uh, it was um, easy to uh, re-implement. The first step was to um, generate the data. So basically we had to run the shallow water model simulation and gather the observations from it. Uh, we had to, uh, after that we had to carry out the simulation tasks. So basically we compared three models, which were uh, uh, 4D variational data, uh, data simulation without regularization with regularization and with uh, deep prior, which the paper introduces. So after that, we can come to uh, the figures. This uh, figure shows the trajectory of the simulated model and it is uh, a direct reproduction of the figure in the paper. And uh, this is the final uh, result uh, figure in the paper, which shows the a uh, comparison between the different physical uh, between the different assimilation methods for the same physical system and we also used the same metrics to uh, analyze uh, the uh, performance of the models and this table here compares all the methods with the five um, metrics that they have used and we can see that um, uh, within the error uh, brackets that the paper provided. So it is um, uh, fully uh, reproducible, the paper. Now I'll just uh, briefly talk about the lessons that we learned and the challenges that we faced. Uh, the first one was basically uh, the computational resources. So we had to uh, run a fewer number of samples. Uh, so we reduced the sample number from uh, 100 to 10, but uh, it still reproduced the results perfectly. So that was uh, good. And one was understanding what the paper was, um, uh, uh, paper was introducing and the associated code. The code did not have a lot of documentation. So it took us a while to figure out what the functions were doing. But at the same time, the uh, code was very modular, so it was still easy to understand. So we appreciate that about the code base. And the last challenge was um, the paper used custom plotting functions. So basically, it was 
difficult for us to reproduce uh, the figures with just um, uh, visualization libraries. We had to use their uh, custom plotting functions for it. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you, Rutika Mukulika. Uh, that's that's great. It is uh, really impressive what we think, what teams have achieved as a group, and the experience that you're sharing is very valuable to others, like trying to reproduce papers. So I guess it's now time that uh, we can move to the winning team, and this is the question mark here. And now it's time for Anne to say something. Ah, okay. So the winning team is. I don't have any jingle, but um, okay. So first, you we had three really awesome notebooks, but we had to uh, to choose the winning team, and the winning team is um is the one who work on reproducing the paper entitled "A Sensitivity Analysis of a Regression Model of Ocean Temperature." Um, and congrats, really, it was really, really, really good quality, and uh, um. I really congratulate uh, all the members of this team. But we also want to congratulate everyone. So the, con the team, the winning team, will have as announced 500 pounds in uh, uh, books from uh, Cambridge University Press. Uh, but the two other teams, they will also have some uh, uh, consolation. I don't know if this is the right word. <laughs> uh, so you will also have some books um, and uh, uh, you will each team will have 160 pounds in Cambridge University Press books that you will have to share. So congrats to everyone. And this is really to, uh, to show that, um, I mean, this is not me offering actually, <laughs> this is a uh, Cambridge University Press, but this is really to acknowledge the very hard work. It's the first time we do this challenge uh, and we, we are really, really pleased with the quality. And that's it on my side. Yes, thank you, Anne, and thank you, all teams. I guess all of us are winners as part of this experience being very valuable. And I guess it's now time to say thanks to all these wonderful people who contributed to the challenge. Apart from the organizing committee, we have people who have uh, been uh, contributing as a helpers. And first of all, we have the participants, all your amazing work, and people who, uh, in some other teams that were unable to submit their 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 the repository tasks they are welcome to contribute to the eds book or joining the climate informatic uh, communities uh, reviewers some of them are here uh, they play a fundamental role to improve the quality the judges we have uh, here uh, douglas connect he was one of the judges with uh, Anne and myself guest speakers we have in total uh, six guest speakers and uh, we have people in infrastructure thanks to the CS scale project for providing this cloud computing uh, infrastructure behind that helps some of the participants to share data and code. And finally, all the institutions that supported uh, this incredible challenge, including the Alan Turing Institute, uh, CS scale project, we have the University of Cambridge and Simula Research Lab in Norway. 